Hey guys, welcome to Bahia de Los Angeles. So just got down here a little bit ago and uh, this is my first time to Baja. I'm really excited and really looking forward to diving these waters and seeing what we can find as we explore. Uh, the reports are that visibility turned pretty bad. So hopefully things can change and uh, the red tide that has moved in will hopefully move out or we'll find some clearer waters. But either way, we're gonna explore and we're gonna have a good time. So let's dive right in. After a good night's sleep, we were up at five before the sun came up and on the water by 6.30. It was a beautiful morning. When we're diving here, we use float lines. So our captain can always see us in the water as well as we can spot each other from a distance. So again, this is my first time diving here in Mexico. So I'm trying to get acquainted with the surroundings. I know it's a little different. There's no kelp here. Um, I did some research on the type of fish I can find out here. And lo and behold, I find a cabrilla. Yes, got him as he's going away from me. So he's not the biggest fish, but I do hear that cabrilla are really delicious to eat. So I'm really excited to try this guy and see if what they say is true. So he's feisty, and again, he's not the biggest of fish, but gotta start somewhere. So I quickly grab him and put him out. So on this dive, I'm looking for a bigger cabrilla or a pargo, and all of a sudden, I go into autopilot as I see this yellowtail. Yes, stone dumb. So this guy kind of surprised me and I just instinctively go for it since we have yellowtail in Southern California. And not the biggest of fish, but still a nice prize to take. On this dive, the current was a little brisk going one direction and the wind was actually going the opposite direction. So I'm working my way around this big boulder and unbeknownst to me, my float line and everything are kind of getting hung up and caught behind me, which isn't a big deal until a little later after I find and shoot this fish. Yep, got him. Well, luckily, my buddy was nearby and he saw the commotion and took a look for me and told me that I didn't have the best secure shot. So he offered to dive and take a second shot, which I took. And here's Russ lining up. And he connected. So I'm gonna go down and see about grabbing this guy. I had breathed up enough in the uh, commotion. And there he is. And yep, my shot was just kinda on the edge. Um, so I'm really glad Russ was there. And as I go up, I realize, oh, I'm not going up any further with this guy. You can see my line is, is around that big boulder. Luckily, it's not that deep. So I'm sure you guys have, have dealt with this if you've uh, used a float line before. And you just basically have to follow it down and detach it from all the little spots that get hung up on it. Though this is annoying, the safety and visibility of using a float line is well worth the effort here. This guy is finally free and I can't stress how important it is to have good dive buddies around to help you. So I saw this decent sized fish around the other side of this rock and I slowly stalked him to this side. He's hard to see and swimming away so in a last ditch effort I'm grunting to get him to turn and Got him, just as he was about to get behind that rock. Stoked. That was a pretty clutch shot and pretty far. But luckily, I was able to get him to turn and got that shot off just in time. Man, when I pulled this guy up, I realized how large this guy was. And certainly, it was the biggest one for that day. I was really stoked. So the technique I was using here in Mexico was to be very stealthy, sliding down and low between rocks. And on this dive, as I did that and got into position, I see this beautiful turtle slowly and methodically hitting right at me. 
Sorry for this shaky footage. I am still hunting, but this was so cool to witness under the water. Day two was another beautiful day here in Baja. So again here, I am moving low and slow across the rocks. I'm literally pulling myself with my left arm, little by little, and kicking minimally so that I'm low and hidden and not spook any other fish around me. And in the distance, I see this guy. Boom! Big Cabrilla, and he takes off running. And you see the dust cloud of sediment that he's kicking up as he's trying to get away in a hole. Now I'm keeping tension on my line the whole time so that fish doesn't get any deeper in that hole. I bring my float over so I can clip off my line. I am directly above that fish now, keeping tension so again, he can't go anywhere. I clip off my shooting line and my gun so I have my hands free. The boat and my buddies are kind of far away so I'm going to make this dive on my own and just take a look. My good buddy Gleb, who's a really good diver, once told me how when you're diving down, it's not dangerous if you don't do anything. You can just go down and take a look and don't do anything sketchy and you'll be alright. So that's what I decided to do. I just came to take a look and see what was happening. There's my fish. He's not all the way in the hole because the shaft is preventing him from doing so. So I start pulling a little bit and realize, hmm, this ain't gonna work. And notice that the shaft is wedged and isn't moving. So all I have to do is gently move it out. And here pops my prize. Ooh, look at this guy. It's a nice size Cabrilla again. Also the biggest one for this day. And put this guy out and hand it over to our captain. Man, this felt good. Now, oh man, my, my clubs are stuck in its uh, gills. They've got really sharp rakes on those gills. But man, that was awesome. That was the uh, biggest fish for me that day. And another amazing day on the water. Thanks for joining me on part one of Adventures here in Bahia de Los Angeles. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. And uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up, uh, consider subscribing, and join me on more adventures. And stay tuned for part two of Baja. And uh, until then, be safe.